Hey, you're listening to Don't Make Sense. I'm Dr. Vivian Rodriguez, an educational psychologist, blogger, educator, and coach who loves to talk about style, life, creating, and mental health. Okay, so I started this podcast to create a space to talk about style and substance, to talk about the complexities of being a woman who's authentic and thriving. All right, let's get into it. In this episode, we're going to be talking about easy to use tools to catapult your daily productivity and gratitude practices. Productivity and gratitude, I feel like these are two things that if you have these going, you can be unstoppable. So I think productivity is just making sure you're efficient with your time and you just like prioritize what you focus on and you're in alignment, right? And now I think that alignment though, the way to get to that is having a daily habit of gratitude. So I have a couple different tools that I'm going to talk about here to help you with your productivity and at the same time, get you into an attitude of gratitude on the daily. So you like Amazon, but you don't know what styles to get. Go ahead and check out my Amazon Live. I'm an A-list creator, which means I do a lot of lives and people like them. (laughs) So go ahead and head over to the show notes for this episode to go and join the live. And don't forget to follow me on Amazon. And then keep in mind, as an Amazon associate, I do earn from qualified purchases and all opinions are my own. And I'll see you guys around. Hey, I know you guys do not have a ton of time to just be scrolling through social media. You got better things to do, right? So that's why I revamped and relaunched my Fave Finds newsletter. And what I did is, it's kind of an in case you missed it. So I scour through the internet to find some styles for midsize and curves. And I also add just some different podcast episodes or books that I'm into lately, just some good stuff for your email inbox. So go ahead and head over to the show notes for this episode to sign up for my fave finds. And don't worry, I'm not going to spam your email inbox. It'll be some good stuff. What's great about the tools I'm about to share is that, well, one of them's free right? And you probably already have it. You just haven't been thinking about it. And then the other couple ones are not expensive and they're just a good way to kind of get into some good daily habits. The first thing that I use all the time that's helping me be super productive is the notes app on your phone. Yeah. The one that's sitting there, that's free. Okay. So I say like the notes app is like, you know, those eighties movies where The main character has um, a love interest that's like no good for them. Like they're chasing after uh, somebody who's just like kind of a jerk, right? (laughs) And then all along, the best friend is sitting there and is the right one for them. And, you know, life could be so much better. So that's the notes app. The notes app is like that best friend who's been sitting around there and waiting for you to discover her or him, you know, (laughs) so that's the notes app. Anyway, so let me tell you why. So the first thing I think that's awesome about this little feature on your iPhone and what I use it for is capturing thoughts. So think about those moments that you have like some kind of brilliant idea. You're taking a shower, you're washing dishes, you're just doing something else. And you are like, oh, that would be great. And then when, you know, later on, you're like, what was that idea and you forgot it and it's just kind of gone. It was fleeting and it's gone. So what you can do is you can put it in your notes app. So you can put different thoughts there and I just put like quick ideas that I want to expand on later. I might kind of jot down some short phrases then I'm able to use it to create a blog post, a caption, um, kind of, you know, a project or something I want to do at home. And I'm just trying to capture that creativity (laughs) when it strikes so that I don't lose it and I have it there in like a bank of ideas and things to do. What I really like about doing this is that I can have some different ideas. I can go back to my notes app and then I can like flesh out these ideas. Like I can look at how do I want to, you know, kind of work through them, use them or whatever and kind of get back into a flow. The other thing that I use the notes app for is high frequency information that's easy to access. So maybe it's my measurements for shopping. Maybe it's a URL that I give out often 
you know, in an email. Maybe it's just like some kind of information. I'm always like, where is that? And I just have it there. So that's, I feel like really saves time. So I'm not looking through a bunch of different things. I might even like screenshot something that I need to remember and then put it into the notes app. All right. One of the game changing features for me on the notes app is the speech to text. So I could use the speech to text while I'm getting ready for, you know, my day, like putting makeup on. Um, maybe I'm just kind of doing something in my car and I just turn the radio off and put the speech to text on so I can talk through something. It's just capturing any ideas you've been considering. So what I do is I will kind of like just, you know, talk through an idea and then it'll create the text for me with that feature. So what I do though after that is I just kind of pause every few phrases though and look at it to edit it. That's the only thing I think you need to think about. Um, just make sure you clean up what the it's kind of uh, recording. Sometimes it's not, it's going to look like gibberish and that's not helpful. Also, you want to like make some spaces for to break up the with the text so that it's not a stream of consciousness. And finally, you want to enunciate really clearly so it's going to make it easier for it to truly capture what you're saying. So I've used the speech to text feature to create like the last few episodes and blog posts. I have just used the speech to text app to kind of think through some ideas and get the copy because I was finding like it was harder to kind of sit down and and think of what I want to you know put out there and then I just take some of it out and structure it a little bit you know just edit but it's been helping to get out a lot more information and content um, and you know what I like too when I do the speech to text the writing will seem a bit more natural, right? It could, because it's from me just talking. So I feel like that's also a nice kind of, uh, you know, little bonus with the notes app speech to text feature. The last thing I do after I have the speech to text kind of info in my notes app, I will go and airdrop it to my computer or I'm going to put it in a Google doc. I just, you know, kind of move it around and then I'm able to put it out as content. Okay, the other two tools, they're very related, they're very similar, and this has definitely helped me become more productive, but also kind of get, like lean into being um, more into a space of gratitude. And what I'm talking about are journals. I have a journal, that's a gratitude journal, and I have another one that's a daily planner with a little dash of gratitude in it. Both are from the productivity store, and it's so funny, I just got the gratitude journal off Amazon. I was just looking for a new journal and um, I saw this one. I'm like, oh, this is cool. And as I started using it, I realized it had a lot of more features that I even, you know, I didn't even notice when I was ordering it. So let's get into why I like them. Okay. So with the gratitude journal, it's like a combination of a journal, um, some prompts for reflection, and it also has a feature or a section, I should say, for habit tracking. So I really, really like that. And it also just has like, kind of like where you can review the day, but also for the week. Okay, so let's get into it. I've been using this gratitude journal for six months. I'm nearing the end where I have to reorder another one. So I feel like I'm pretty well-versed in the different sections and features of this journal. And I use it on the daily. So I have my morning routine that I've talked about in other episodes. I get up between 4.30 and 5.30 a.m. I know it sounds crazy, but it's it works for me. And I will read a couple books um, and then I go and journal and then I kind of plan my day a little bit, you know, loose, loosely, you know. So this one is part of my daily routine. So what I like is at first it's going to have you reflect on what is the priority of the day. So I'm going to think about what's my objective for the day. I really, really like this because sometimes, I mean, I find that before having a morning routine, I was just going through the day kind of like whatever, like not really like autopilot. So this kind of focuses me to think about what's my goal for the day. Then it's followed by a section that you have uh, prompting to think about what are you grateful for. So I put, you know, my health, my family, all of those things. And I feel like daily, like practice of reflecting on that really helps me stay grounded. And then it has an area for a daily af affirmation. So I might be like, 
you know, writing what what's my affirmation for the day. Usually I put all is well, that kind of thing, you know. Um, and then it has a section where you talk about good things that happened the day before. I really like that. The way I use the journal is to reflect on the day before. I think it's kind of designed more for like the end of the day, but that doesn't work for me. So I just do in the morning, reflecting on the day before and a little bit of what I plan to do for the day. And then it has a section where you talk about what are you excited about? I like this because research has said that if you have some kind of optimistic attitude or you're hopeful, you're looking forward to something that can really help you with your health, your mental health. So I love that it has that in there and it kind of prompts me to think about what's going on that I'm really, you know, pumped about. It follows with another section on how are you feeling? So it has different options like happy, excited, relaxed, grateful, overwhelmed. I like this because it just lets me check in with myself, right? Um, you know, like to be honest with myself. And lastly, it has a daily reflection and self-assessment. So I can assess how did I do, you know, and then also just some thoughts about what was going on that day and that sort of thing. I like having that and also the mood, like what were you, what mood you were in? Because then I can see kind of patterns. If I was feeling pretty crummy, then I think my reflection is going to reflect that. Another feature I really like with this gratitude journal is that it has a weekly reflection section oh, that rhymes <laughs> and a goals section. And so you have this, it just kind of prompts you to reflect on the whole week and has a section that talks about the three biggest wins of the week. So I have, I have a chance to like, look at how did my week go? What are the wins? And it could, you could decide what the wins are. They don't need to be like crazy monumental wins, just like micro wins. And then three kind things you did this week. And then um, it also talks about like, think about things that were fun or relaxing during the week. And then how can you make that happen again? I love that. And then it also talks about things that were stressful or hard during the week. And how did you overcome them? I love that piece because it's helping you first, like celebrate the wins and how can you make, you know, or things that were fun. And then how can you make that happen again? And then it also is kind of acknowledging anything that was difficult and how you overcame it. And then that's kind of reminding you of the tools you have at your disposal. Or if you didn't overcome it very well and it was challenging, how can you get better? And then the next section is talking about your goals and priorities for next week and how you're gonna make the week better. And it ends with this great section. This is probably my favorite part where it's habit and skills tracking for the week. And so I'm able to like check in with myself what were the skills and habits that I followed through on during the week? So I might have like, you know, it has like seven spaces. So you add your skills and habits. So I might put, you know, drinking water, getting up between 4.30 or 5.30, um, you know, three to four miles a day. So these are the different habits. And then I check off how many times I did it during the week. I love this because I can tell, like there's like a pattern with, if I'm in a crummy mood, right? And the day wasn't going well, I can look at the habits that I kept up with that week. And there's a like a correlation there. So I feel like that has really helped me increase my productivity also while staying grounded in gratitude. Finally, there's another item from the productivity store. It's a daily planner with a dash of gratitude in it. I feel like it's a like daily gratitude journal in a sense too. Like it's a mix of both. Um, but it has a little bit more focus on organization and what your activities are for the day and for the week. But I love that this one actually has sections where there's the categories for the goals that you want to set for your week, your month, and tasks. But what's great is the categories are not just like finances and relationship or career. It also has like spiritual, right? So we're trying to have like a well-balanced approach to what we're prioritizing. And then it also has a section on habits and it'll say, what are the habits to break and then good habits to make? I just love that because it rhymes. <laughs> so it's good. You, you can kind of get like, you know, it's good because you uh, get honest with yourself, right? What, what am I doing, right? What do I need to stop doing? What's my toxic trait? And what do I need to replace it with? So I love that little kind of behavioral piece and that it has for the, you know, the different goal sections and tasks. It has those same categories, finances, um, health and spirituality, relationships, 
So I really like that. I like that it's kind of prompting you to think a little more multifaceted, right? And then it also has a bird's eye view of the month. And, and then there's a section that I have not seen before in other planners where it talks about, you know, income, salary and wages and budget. So it's like tracking that at the bottom of the planner. So that's kind of cool too, just to kind of, again, like, let's be honest with what, what are you really doing? What are you pretending you don't know <laughs> sort of thing? Um, so I love that. And then they have a section that's also kind of a, you know, reflection of like, what's your greatest accomplishment uh, today? How are you going to make tomorrow better? Kind of the same vibe as the gratitude journal. And it also just has a little bit more of the kind of three things you want to get done on your list. There's a section where it's talking about this week's wins and lessons learned. I love that, right? Because I feel like when I have a challenging situation, I try to reframe it and be like, okay, what am I learning right now? And after I get through it, I go, oh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Instead of getting really negative about it, just, oh, we're learning. This is what's happening. <laughs> so I love that it's it has that kind of embedded in there for you to think that way, to train yourself to reframe and look at what are the lessons learned. So that is the journal and planner that I've been using that I feel like has really helped me get you know, my productivity up, but also just get more in the habit of gratitude. And the notes app has helped me just be able to generate more content and to get more focused as well. All right, there you have it. Those are easy to use tools to catapult your daily productivity and gratitude practices. Like what you're hearing? Go ahead and subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. You can also share the podcast on Instagram and tag me at Live by Viv. As far as my music, it's The Croft by Joachim Karud. And everything we talked about in this episode can be found in the show notes on livebyviv.com. Okay, and remember, don't mix in because you don't need to.